once upon a midnight dreary while i pondered weak and weary over a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore while i nodded nearly napping suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping rapping at my chamber door tis some visitor i muttered tapping at my chamber door only this and nothing more ah distinctly i remember it was in the bleak december and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor eagerly i wished the morrow vainly i had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow sorrow for the lost lenore for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named lenore nameless here for evermore and the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before so that now to still the beating of my heart i stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door that it is and nothing more presently my soul grew stronger hesitating that no longer sir said i or madam truly your forgiveness i implore but the fact is i was napping so gently you came rapping and so faintly you came tapping tapping at my chamber door that i scarce was sure i heard you here i opened wide the door deep into that darkness peering long i stood there wondering fearing doubting dreaming dreams no mortal ever dare to dream but the silence was unbroken and the darkness gave no token and only word there spoken was the word whispered lenore this i whispered and an echo murmured back the word lenore merely this and nothing more back into the chamber turning all my soul within me burning soon again i heard a tapping somewhat louder than before surely said i surely that is something at my window's lattice let me see then what there it is and this mystery explore let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore tis the wind and nothing more open here i flung the shutter when with my flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raving of the saintly days of yore now the least obedience made he not a minute stopped or stayed he but with mien of lord or lady perched upon my chamber door perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door perched and sat and nothing more then this ebony bird beguiling my sad face into smiling by the graces stirred decorum of the countenance it wore through thy crest be shorn and shaven thou i said art sure no craven ghastly grim and ancient ravering wandering from the nightly shore tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore quoth the raven evermore much i marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly though its answers little meaning little relevancy bore for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door bird or beast above the sculpted bust above his chamber door was such a name as nevermore but the raven sitting lonely on placid bust spoke only that one word as if his soul in the one word it did outpour nothing further than he uttered not a feather that he fluttered tears i scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before then the bird said nevermore startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken doubtless said i when it utters its only stock in store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs on burden bore till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never never more but the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling straight i wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door then upon the velvet stinking i betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy thinking that this ominous bird of yore what this bird ungainly ghastly gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant into croaking nevermore 
This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, and the lamp-lighted gloated oar, but whose velvet violet lining, with the lamp-light gloating oar, she shall pass, ah, never more. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfume from some unseen censer, swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretched, I cry, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, a nonpenth from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff, this kind nepenthe, and forgot this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, with tempter sent or weather, tempest tossed there here ashore, desolate yet all unendaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Geeland? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still of bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by the God we both adore, tell the soul with sorrow laden within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whose angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word or sign of parting bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting, Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Palaeus, just above my chamber door and his eyes all the seeming of demons that is dreaming and the lamplight over him streaming through his shadows on the floor and my soul from out the shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore <laughs>